Good day, everybody. Welcome to today's vlog. I got some very exciting news for everybody today. Wanted to start this up and mention this right before I get to the theme music. That I am excited about today's vlog. Before I do the rest of the today's vlog, I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go do a live vlog with special guests, Sporn Ryan, Adventures by George, Adam Delu, and Tampa J. They're all here today in Salt Lake City. Let's go do a live vlog with them right now. Go check that out right now. There were live streams. When were the live streams? I know nothing about this. What's live streams. What's yeah. live streams? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. You're saying there was something about live streams. Do you need any more live streams? What about live streams? Yeah, apparently, there was a live stream. Well, I don't know anything about live streams. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Blow my secret. Yeah, I know that was a big fat lie. But anyways, welcome to today's vlog. We're in Salt Lake City. Let's go check out uh, Brigham Young's homes, the Lion House, and the Beehive House. Let's go check it out. Let's go do exploring. Let's go. Today's episode, we will be visiting the Lion House and the Beehive House in downtown Salt Lake City. Both houses are pictured here. And they are located in Temple Square in the southeast portion of it. These are the residences of Brigham Young, a known polygamist, to house him and his wives. And in order to go throughout the house, we need to learn a little bit about church history. As we said earlier in the vlog, Brigham Young was a known polygamist and he needed a large residence to help accommodate his family. The Beehive House served as the executive mansion of the Utah Territory from 1852 to 1855 and was where Young entertained guests. This suite included Young's offices and his private bedroom where he died in 1877. Beginning in the late 1880s, Young's son, John W. Young, added a large Victorian-style addition to the rear of the building and heavily remodeled the older portion of the home. The Young family lost the home when it was sold in an auction in 1893 to settle debts held by John W. Young. John Beck, a successful miner and businessman, lived in the home for a short time before it was sold to satisfy his creditors. Eventually, it was purchased by the church and was used as the official home of church presidents Lorenzo Snow and his successor Joseph F. Smith, both of whom died in the mansion. Smith, who died in 1918, was the nephew of church founder Joseph Smith Jr., he was also the last of the church presidents to practice polygamy at the time of his death and share the residence with four of his wives. Marriage is a very popular thing in the church, as with many other religions, and so are, so are the priesthood holders, which the priesthood holders being held are the priesthood being held by men. Although the priesthood is held by men only, women play just as important a role in the church callings as men do. Men and women work together to help keep the church going. In the early days of the church, there were not enough men in the church to help give priesthood blessings to members, and there was not enough men for men to, for the women to marry. The revelation of banning future polygamous marriages from happening was given in 1890 for a couple of different reasons. One, by 1890, there are enough men in the church for monogamous marriages, and two, Utah was seeking statehood, and the U.S. government would not grant it to them until this was banned. On September 26, 1890, Wilfred Woodruff, fourth president of the LDS Church, issued the, issued the first manifesto which banned any further polygamous marriages from being performed. Any, indivi any individual found guilty of the continuation of performing these marriages will be excommunicated. In 1890, now, the 1890 manifesto did not end any prior polygamous marriages that were, that were performed prior to the manifesto. In 1904, while Joseph F. Smith was president of the second uh, of the church, a second manifesto was issued because it was discovered that these polygamous, polygamous marriages were still being performed and these members that were performing them were promptly excommunicated. The second the second manifesto was a reminder to members to stop getting into these types of relationships. Now on the subject of ex excommunication, in the church, excommunication is not seen as a bad or a negative thing. It is seen as a way for members to be forgiven of their sins and be given the chance, the second chance to come back to God. I hope everybody enjoys the rest of the show. And I hope that you learned something new while watching this. I didn't really say much, but I just wanted to be able to go to Beehive House and learn more.
Hey everybody, right here in downtown Salt Lake City. Cloudy rainy day, perfect for Seattle people like me. Heading on over to Brigham Young's house. Right here in City Creek, downtown. Right across the street from Temple Square. Let's go check out some historic places. Salt Lake City, Utah Temple took the Mormons 40 years to build that thing. But that's not what we're here to see today. We're actually here to see this man's house, two of them. That's a statue of Brigham Young up there. And yeah, you look around the rest of the statue. It says Brigham Young and the Pioneers. Pioneers, Pioneer. And a member of the, of the Ute tribe to which Utah is named after. When the uh, Mormons came to Utah in 1847, they actually, um, well, if you know, near American history, a lot of times uh, Native Americans were forced out their lands. Whereas here in Utah, the, Mo the Mormons actually built a friendship with the Ute Indian tribe and actually helped build and strengthen Utah's economy, which is a good thing for. It will actually help out people on both sides. This building right here, the Joseph Smith Memorial Building, is actually the former Hotel Utah. Just gonna videotape this real quick. If you want to read the entire sign, you just go ahead and pause it. But that goes to this Hotel Utah right here. Pretty cool building. This is actually the church headquarters building, where all the main thing, where all the big stuff happens, all the callings for the church. All the official statements come from in there. Okay, here we are. We got two housing, two houses here. Well, technically three, but two of them are combined into one. This is the Lion House. This is one of the houses, one of the houses that uh, Brigham Young lived in. And then these two houses, the one on the right over there is the Beehive House. And you can tell that that's a Beehive House because the very top, you can see what resembles a Beehive. Here's a little placard for the Lion House. Just going, if you want to read it, go ahead and pause the video right now and take a look at it. But I wanted to go ahead and mention that here at the Lion House, then it's usually closed for banquets of some sort, whereas the Beehive House is more for a tour. Right here. So I guess I was wrong. There's, you know, I just a minute ago I showed you the three different buildings, the Lion House. How's that? This one was the other house. And the third house is right there, but this is actually Brigham Young's office. If you want to go and read the placard right there, pause the video and watch there. They're saying that this desk was from the 1850s. That's pretty cool. Salt Lake Temple. That's yeah. pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Sorry? I don't know. I'm the person all night. And the sisters like to call it Brigham Young to bring him old. <laughs> I know that's so <laughs> funny. And this is pretty cool because this is actually an outfit, a suit that Brigham Young would wear. As a matter of fact, this cane he was using that cane when they first came into utah and this suit is actually the same suit he's wearing in this photo towards the end of his life that's pretty cool like that um everyone uh look at the panties in the world
Brigham Young already passed away, so he never saw this one. It was added by his son, John Williams. So even though he never lived here, we can still find the picture of him right here. Okay, the room I'm standing in right now is just going around was one I told you about that was actually added on after Brigham Young had passed away. And that's what this room is. Yes. And so I can guess why, where it comes from. Have you ever heard about that? The one is false? Uh-huh. The lion, the symbol of the lion. We talked about how Have a good day. This is the gardens on the outside of the, of the beehive house. This is what we call Eagle Gate right here. You can see the eagle on top of a beehive house to represent the strength of the economy here in the church here. And the tour has actually ended. Again, another one of these signs. If you want to read the entire sign, go ahead and pause the video right now and read it. Very interesting stuff. All right, well, thank you very much for watching today's vlog. This is something that I have learned throughout my life, this is something that's part of me, it's something that's important to me. Um, it's, who, it's part of who I am. And I'm glad I could be able to share this with everybody. Um, don't forget to check out the links down below uh, to my Etsy page to buy your digital files of photos. And also visit patreon.com slash Chris the Shriner Dog. I'll put the links down in, in the description for you. Um, again, thanks for coming on this tour with me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody.